Welcome everyone to the Planet Microcap Showcase Virtual 2022. I'm your host, Robert Kraft. And now presenting at our event is Jay Hutton. He is the president and CEO of Visibility. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is VSBY on the CSE and VSBGF on the OTC. Jay, take it away. Thank you. Uh, we're going to talk about Visibility. We're an artificial intelligence company focusing on computer vision. And although artificial intelligence is a broad category, it's essentially meaningless uh, at that level. We actually drill it down into the specific applications of computer vision and machine learning and the application of those two technologies on retail and security. And really we're looking at true disruptive technology. What is disruption from our perspective? It is technology that changes the fundamental precepts and processes of previously uh, uh, deployed technology. Really, we have two areas in which um, we're doing that. Quick uh, reference to forward-looking statements. Um, and now, so Visibility is a software as a service company. We generate our revenue on a recurring basis. We have three modules of software, which I'll go through in just a moment, but they're licensed per endpoint per month. And an endpoint is a camera, a uh, display, et cetera. And I'll go through that in just a little bit uh, more detail. The most important piece about the retail side of our business is that we are delivering technology that, that for the first time has delivered measurability, audience measurability into retail. And just to provide some context for that, uh, Google did a pretty good job of bringing measurability to the internet and figured out how to monetize the internet. And that is essentially an advertising methodology. It, you might not know this, but uh, we, we all of us, are the product on the internet. We become part of a broader profile. Um, and then when an, when an advertiser comes in and wants to de deploy advertisement on the internet, they buy a profile, they buy a, an audience. They may buy 35 year old males making more than $100,000 a year. They may buy 25 year old females making less than $60,000 $60, a year. That kind of thing is a profile. So if we, we always knew, at least those of us that are following this technology as closely as we have, we always knew that once we were able to crack the code, both economically and from a, a science point of view on how to deliver audience measurement in physical bricks and mortar, we would have a tiger by the tail because that is the very high value location. That is where we can be influenced. That is the what retailers will call the moment of truth, the place where you make brand decisions and you exhibit brand preference. And that brand preference can be modified at the point of sale. I'll, go, I'll talk about security in just a moment, but still focusing on the retail side of the business, we have three distinct modules that we sell to um, retailers or to brands. And honestly, the most common candidate for a customer right now is a, is a uh, retailer who are looking to develop digital placements in retail, leaving behind the ways of analog advertisement. Think of posters and printed materials and moving towards the digital transformation that comes from deploying technology in store. Uh, think of display screens and that sort of thing. Data capture is our anonymous data collection. It is the privacy compliant data collection capability. It has the ability to identify audiences by gender, by age, by sentiment. Uh, the amount of time spent engaging with display, this person has spent three and a half seconds looking at the Coca-Cola display. And while that person is looking at the Coca-Cola display, they're, exhibit they're exhibiting confusion or anger. These are all very relevant metrics for a brand who are looking to drive more and more impression level media to the point of sale, to the where the magic happens, where the rubber hits the road. Uh, you would imagine easily that uh, other platforms broadcast media, print media, the internet itself are useful uh, advertising channels, but not nearly as impactful because you're, those are all places where you cannot uh, buy that which is being promoted to you. A store is a place where you can buy that which is being promoted to you. So it's a, 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 a significantly better place. The vision capture is the second module. It is the I, my, I call it, my developers hate it when I say this, but uh, this is the PowerPoint deliver uh, 
optimized for retail. It is visual display, controls the, the screens, and allows us to deploy any kind of interactive or, or passive display on a screen in a retail, multiple types of screen. And then the third module is visibility vector. That is the module that actually looks out from the cameras that are deployed, coincident with display. Generally, we're generally speaking, we put cameras beside displays so that we can measure the performance of the display via camera, computer vision. The visibility vector has the ability to look for weapons, look for persons of interest, think of serial shoplifters, and look for look for behaviors that are considered with that are that are associated with uh, theft or shoplifting. So we've got both an offense, I like to say, both an offense side of our business and a defense side, operational benefit side of the business. Some of the logos that are part of our business, uh, we have multiple joint ventures. We're involved in a company that we founded together with Intel Capital called Austin GIS. Um, we are uh, also involved with Tech Mahindra. Tech Mahindra is deploying one of our largest networks, which I'll talk about in a moment. That's a joint venture we've done with AB InBev, where we're deploying 50,000 locations in Latin America. We're at 2,000 locations now, just, to, just under a year into it. Um, and we have multiple relationships with HCL uh, and systems integrators like that. Um, our channel partners, uh, Sensormatic, this is Johnson Controls Retail Technology Company. They're actually the largest retail technology company on the planet. Um, we've been in an OEM relationship with them for three years now. An OEM meaning uh, we build product that they brand and sell within their solution set. And of course, our strategic partners, we would count Intel as our strategic partner, as well as a company like Westrock with a largest display manufacturer in the US, a multi-billion dollar organization and an S&P component company, WPP. The CEO of WPP Retail Group is on our board of directors and part of, uh, they're a very large agency, a $50 billion plus agency. So you can imagine, as part of my conversation so far, that we're heavily exposed to the advertising metrics and the advertising cadence of the marketplace. And you know, having WPP as a partner of ours is a, is a really important piece. So we're talking about, at least on the retail side, uh, really turning the store, as I've said before, into a retail, uh, into a, sorry, into a uh, advertising medium, into an advertising channel. Examples of advertising channels, as I said a moment ago, are print media, broadcast media, internet, um, uh, out of home media. Think of the billboard on the, on the side of the highway. These are all examples of uh, media channels or advertising channels. The store itself is now becoming a media channel, really because we've kindly we finally broken the back of the economics. It used to be too expensive to deploy technology into stores at scale. And now because we follow Moore's law and you know it gets you get more and more for less and less, we now have sort of got unit level economics for the store that actually makes makes it make sense. And I'll give you an example. Um, there are multiple locations within the store which are obvious candidates for advertising in the aisle, at the end of the aisle, as you walk in the store. And interestingly enough, on the cooler uh, itself, we've developed developed really interesting and cool technology that allows the cooler glass door to be replaced by an LCD panel that is both displayable, which is not really a word, but hopefully everyone knows what I mean, but also transparent. So you can actually deploy a media campaign on the cooler door with camera technology to measure the performance of that campaign. And you can also see through the cooler door to the product inside. Boston Consulting Group says this marketplace is worth $100 billion in the next five years. If that's true, and I believe at least most of it's true, it is the most important uh, new media channel in the last 50 years, greater in its significance, at least initially, than the internet itself. So how we do this, we actually deploy our technology and we measure concentric circles. We measure proximity to display. We measure engagement with display. And as I said a moment ago, we measure the type of audience per display. And you can see here at the bottom, we do demographics. We count the number of visitors. We look at ad view, who's looking at the ad when an ad is displayed, which of course allows us to use this uh, you know, media impressions nomenclature, which is exactly how advertisers speak about uh, when they deliver advertising, what that means, store, dwell, gender, age range, and visitors. So there's a very unique things that can be done with respect to measuring the performance of a specific creative or specific ad type to, to females or to males. All these are really in, uh, invaluable and, and super um, monetizable components of how we deliver our product. I wanna spend just a quick moment here on what we're doing uh, 
in Latin America. This is really important, not only for visibility, but also for the industry. We've got a very large uh, objective uh, to deploy a 50,000 store network within the five countries that constitute the core of um, AB InBev's Middle America zone. Uh, so that's basically the, uh, Mexico down to the tip of Brazil. Uh, all of those countries in there are deploying um, our technology over time. The, the, we're starting with Mexico where AB InBev is not only a comprehensive iconic brand, as we all know, uh, but also a bricks and mortar retailer, which is kind of a unique situation. They have retail stores. They have 10,000 of them in Mexico itself. And of course, outside of Mexico, they have enormous influence over a, a, a large a swath of a large, sorry, a large swath of small retail, mom and pop retail, what we call traditional trade and also modern trade, which of course would be considered to be larger form factor. The objective of this contract is 50,000 stores within five years. Um, by the end of 23, the current year, we expect to be between 5,000 and 7,000 stores. We're at 2,000 stores right now, just under a year uh, underway. Um, and what we're doing there is we're deploying these tech, this technology, which is camera display um, in retail and deploying this for the purposes of advertising measurement. So the monetization piece would be, hey, PepsiCo or hey, Coca-Cola, uh, we're going to give you a 10-second video ad in this location at the point of sale. We're going to give you measurement. We're going to tell you how many people saw it, how many women saw it, how many 25-year-olds saw it, et cetera. And this is a, um, a really significant game-changing opportunity in retail as we're looking to monetize the physical bricks and mortar. So the three delivery elements, as is identified here on the slide, are the digital display piece, the audience measurement piece. The little insert here shows you exactly how we're measuring the audience and real-time AI security. So if there's a bad guy that's in a database that has been a frequent uh, uh, participant in theft, uh, we can enroll that person in a database. And then when we see them proactively, the camera can identify them and alert the shopkeeper or alert if they wish, um, law enforcement. We also use that technology to look for weapons using computer vision as well. So the unit level economics are really compelling. We have a 33% equal participation in the media revenue. Outside of the joint venture is our participation in the SaaS revenue. We license the technology to uh, the joint venture per store per month. Uh, for between $10 and $15 per store per month. And then the uh, license revenue sits as a direct revenue model to visibility, but then an indirect revenue model is the 33% participation in the media revenue, which as I stated earlier, is north of $250 million per year uh, when this uh, network grows to 50,000 stores. And a, and a significant deal for us, a benchmark deal for us, a cornerstone deal for us. And what's good about this deal is it really puts the store as a media inflection into the into the real commercial momentum. And what we're seeing as a result of this is significant follow along happening in the US. Uh, in particular, as I'll mention in a, a summary slide, just a moment, in particular deals we're doing in the fuel and convenience category in the US, which is um, a very high value marketplace where we're deploying digital platforms and we're delivering the, the advertising model on top of that. What's unique about visibility and the reason why we think we're leading in this category at the moment is we've been able to put together disparate components of a delivery model into a single comprehensive solution. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on this slide, but it really tells you that um, not only are we a tech stack provider, which of course we are, and that is our core, um, we are also a creative agency, we're a media sales group, and. Uh, we will drive media spend into the stores that we've deployed. This allows us to leverage our tech stack, have our tech stack be part of our differentiation, but also have a significant portion of the media revenue, a, a pro rata portion of the media revenue as that media revenue grows. And while SaaS is wonderful and recurring and high margin, it is capped. I mean, you can only get so much money based upon the number of stores you've deployed. Media, on the other hand, is not capped. Media changes, its value changes, its value changes and grows over time. And uh, this is why we made a concerted effort to replicate the LATAM model, the AB InMev model, AB InBev model as we deploy in other markets. Um, shifting over quickly to the security category, 
Uh, we've deployed our technology in Mexico City, north of 10,000 cameras now. We've deployed in um, religious institutions in the U.S. Uh, of a particular flavor and now be going beyond that to more and more smart cities implementations. What this technology does, again, the underpinning is computer vision. It looks for anomalies in the field of view. An example would be um, a person of interest that might be identified or a license plate of interest that might be identified or a behavior of some kind that might be identified or a weapon of some kind that might be identified in the field of view. The problem we have in security right now is we've deployed thousands and thousands of CCTV cameras with nobody watching them or they only become preventative in nature when or defensive, if you will, in nature. It, it, we, they only become that when people are looking at them. So if no one's looking at them, which is usually the case, um, we're very familiar, all of us, with the Pelosi break-in in San Francisco. What you might not know about that is th that is the that home has cameras that are monitored in Washington 24-7 by a, a, a cadre of people. But only if they're looking at the at the at the video monitors can actually can we take preventative measures. Well, our concept and idea has been and has now been validated. What if we use software to look at the monitors? What if we use software to look for anomalies? What if we lose, use software to look for uh, people that approach the perimeter, people that are carrying a weapon, license plates that have come into a location where they shouldn't be? These are all examples of how AI, coupled with computer vision, can, can, can tangibly increase our security. And what this graph shows you is what we've done in Mexico, which we're now replicating elsewhere, of course. We reduced crime, or we were part of the reduction of crime over a three-year period, down 45%, which is very relevant because it impacts how people feel about their society. Critical to that uh, and separate to that, and I can share under separate cover with anyone that's interested, we recently did a sentiment study in Mexico City, which when we started was one of the most dangerous cities on the planet. And now the uh, feeling of safety is up 60%. And this is where the rubber hits the road. This has political outcomes, it gets mayors reelected, and of course has uh, the, the network growing as we speak to other places in Mexico where they have similar problems. So the security market, we've spoken about the retail market, the security market has this crazy compound growth rate of almost 15%. And uh, on the retail side, it's equally uh, significant. So we're sitting astride two different marketplaces that are growing at compound growth rates that are north of 14 or 15%. So we've got a significant opportunity. And again, uh, as you can see, this marketplace is not necessarily limited to Mexico, although that is certainly where we cut our teeth. Um, it is growing worldwide. And really the simple hypothesis is if you have a choice between deploying a dumb camera, a dumb camera meaning it is not capable of logic inference, which is computer vision, and the choice of deploying a computer vision enabled camera, you almost always will deploy a computer vision camera because that augments, doesn't supplant, but augments the operator, makes the operator more effective. Our one year price chart is probably not a whole lot different than any other technology company as we're on this in the environment that we're in. Uh, but it is does demonstrate, in my opinion, a significant buying opportunity. We saw a high of 200 and some odd million market cap. Um, we've come down considerably from that to something in the neighborhood of 50 million at the moment. Uh, we are cashed up. We just did a significant financing of $7 million. And we're now looking to profitability in 2023. So some of the milestones that we've achieved, I referenced this earlier in, in uh, the conversation. I'll let anyone who's interested read them. But the most significant pieces we've done, uh, I'll, I'll highlight the most significant. We've done an integration with 911 Inform for the U.S. marketplace, which allows for a very comprehensive suite of solutions for school safety. We're about to launch that after some successful trials with schools. And what that capability is basically a weapon detected at school perimeter or building perimeter leads to a building workflow set of solutions, i.e. the building, the doors get locked or a strobe light gets sent off or an, a short message gets sent to all the teachers or you know various types of applications which connect computer vision alerting mechanism to building systems. And we're excited about this as we launch and scale this, which we're doing now, uh, we think it will lead to tangible life-saving, which is really quite rewarding to have a technology to be able to do that. 
Um, and we've done that based upon a collaboration we've done with 911 Inform, the leading school systems integrator in the US. And we're actually complemented by the fact that some uh, there's some specific federal and state funding that's now being applied to this uh, tangibly significant problem in the US. In addition to that, um, oh, we've done uh, signed a significant uh, uh, partnership with Total Play in Mexico, which is the second largest Mexican telecom carrier, where they're now selling our product within their suite of solutions. Uh, we deployed, uh, signed a contract to deploy our technology with Mountain Express uh, Oil, which is a fuel and convenience category, 2,800 locations in uh, the US. Uh, that is uh, underway right now and uh, accelerating into Q1. As I mentioned moments ago, we uh, didn't oversubscribe private placement in the fall. And of course, launching programmatic advertising in Latin America. This is basically on the fly advertising in the same way that your mobile phone uh, oddly and, and mysteriously picks up your uh, ads that are connected to your search patterns in the past 24, 48 hours. This is exactly what we're doing in Latin America where programmatic is being deployed into stores. Uh, and we're now deploying our partner network. We've signed uh, Promo Especial in Mexico, and we've signed Market Medios in Colombia, and others, a bunch of local players that are going to help us deliver the solution set in that marketplace. And of course, awarded a patent for content management. This took us three years to get there. The U.S. Patent and Trade Office, Trademark Office is quite backed up at the moment, but we've got a significant um, patent issued to us in September of this year for how we connect our content management to uh, audience. And then lastly, as I wrap up here, some of the things that we're looking forward to, key partnerships, the global powerhouse companies such as Intel, AB, InBev. I mean, if you look at our, our, our uh, opportunity matrix, the AB InBev deal with the objective of 50,000 stores uh, by the end of year five has a SaaS revenue of north of 10 million and has a media revenue of 250 million of which 33% uh, would come to us. So something in the neighborhood of 70, 80, $80 million. So significant opportunity just in that one deal. A SaaS business model with 80% plus um, uh, gross margins, a current backlog of 50 million in contracted revenues, software as a service. SaaS is a incremental business. One goes to two, goes to four, goes to eight. Um, and we're now a leader in this uh, store as a medium consortium beside our colleagues of Intel and WPP. As I mentioned a moment ago, there's now budget set aside for school safety and um, some, some strategic investors, most notably, uh, in September, Al, Al Jabbar Group out of Saudi Arabia invested 2.25 million in the company, and uh, so roughly seven percent of the company. And uh, are now we're working with them now in a joint venture that would take our product into the region as a collaborative joint venture of which we would own 50 percent apiece. And of course, uh, the last thing just, you know, if you're looking at Latin America as a marketplace, you can't ignore Brazil. Brazil is the second most valuable media market uh, in the Americas and expect us to do a deployment or announce a set of partners for Brazil in the first quarter of uh, 23. So that's what I've got so far, Robert. I'd be happy to address any questions that might come uh, as a result of that. First question I have for you, and, and I ask this a lot on, uh, uh, it's one of my main questions I ask on, our, on the due diligence series uh, podcast that I do. You know, you have a lot going on with visibility. You know, yeah. so, so what are some of the more frequently asked questions that you get from investors? I mean, you're about to do one-on-ones here, you know, you've done one-on-ones at other events, you know, what, what kind of types of questions do you get more, more often when it comes to visibility? And maybe we can. Well, so that. On the, on the retail side, everyone, everyone, ha everyone gives me the question about privacy. You know, your, your technology is sounds great, but it also sounds spooky <laughs> and uh, it's not the first time. You have to be a you have to be a certain age, Robert, to get this reference. And I'm guessing you just might make the cut. But um, Minority Report, hey man, it sounds like Minority Report. It sounds yeah. like you're proactively driving advertising to me based upon my identity. Well, we're not doing that unless you unless you define identity as your demographic uh, profile. And you know some people do, I suppose. But identity means Jay Hutton or Robert Kraft. We don't do that. We could do that. And in security, we're required to do that, but security has its own sort of allowances and governance. But in the in the marketing side of this, all I care about is you as an advertising uh, profile, right? So you become valuable not just because of um, you become valuable not because of who you are, but what neighborhood or what uh, 
demographic profile you fit within, <laughs> right? So I know what to drive you. And that profile can, can extend to socioeconomic status. It can extend to where you live. Um, but in our case, it's if I'm in retail, I'm a 35-year-old male, um, I'm going to be uh, set upon by advertising that's different than a 25-year-old female. And we know in advertising that the more distinct we can make our audience, more targeted we can make our ads, the more valuable our ads will be. So I deal with privacy with some frequency. Uh, the other side is just to quickly, on the security side, it's still privacy related and there are headwinds in the US. Frankly, especially in the school safety thing, those headwinds are diminishing kind of daily, right? Because security is about what liberties I'm prepared to trade off for my security. And, and the more assailed we feel as a population, the more we're willing to trade off. It's a, it's really as simple as that. And the good news is it's not a broad brush. It's We're not talking about deploying uh, China-like surveillance. This is not that, right? This is keeping our kids safe. Right. And our and our kids have an expectation of us to keep them safe, and especially if technology can do that. And we're now at a point as we evolve as a, as a society where technology can do those things. So if technology can do those things, why wouldn't we use that technology to do it? So I think the next year for visibility, especially on the security side, will be um, highlighted by how aggressively we move into this category with some of our very unique solutions that can aid and abet on school safety. And so we've spent a long time preparing for that. Uh, we've done a bunch of testing, you know, rinse and repeat, refine, adjust, and, and we're now in a position where we're deploying this at scale. Absolutely. So let's talk about that also a little bit more, you know, in terms of the competitive landscape, because there's clearly a, a tailwind in that sense that you're saying that, you know, Folks are focusing more on security, especially in our institutions, our treasured institutions, you know, as well as, you know, even just when you look at the AB InBev deal that you guys did, you know, I'm very curious as what the competitive landscape looks like. Are there other companies that have similar technology doing certain things? You know, like love to hear more there because, I mean, are you competing against yourself or others that are doing maybe one or two things that visibility does? Don't ever believe a tech CEO that says we have an enduring, sustainable uh, lead and advantage because I'm 30 years in tech and I've never seen one. And in those 30 years, if you just reference your encyclopedia, you can see that there's been a lot of significant uh, technological enhancements in those 30 years. And I've seen them. I was a front row seat to the growth of the internet. Uh, I was a front row seat to the growth of e-commerce. I mean, tr truthfully, I've seen a lot in this marketplace. So. My my only response would be, listen, if you can if you can carve yourself a unique model that not only by virtue of your tech, which of course is the baseline, but um who you're partnering with and how you're partnering with them to create a sorry, business school term, a moat. <laughs> um, if you can do that, then you've got some level of protection. And particularly in the store as a media space, man, it's a land grab at the moment. It's a it's an explosive land grab. I'm not foolish enough to think that we're the only ones that thought of this, uh, that we're the smartest people in the room. I mean, that that is the beginning of the end when you start to think that. But I think if we shore up our partnerships, we make them trusted, loyal, committed, win-win, then we have some level of protection beyond the tech. I'm not dismissing the tech because I think the tech is a core baseline. But I think it's delusional to think that you'll always maintain a lead on the tech. You'll have a lead, you'll lose it, you'll gain it back, you'll lose it. You know, this is the way it is. And so I think with uh, we are we are directly at the C-suite with AB InBev. We're now planning other markets with AB InBev. Uh, and as long as we continue to do what we're doing, there's no motivation for them to go and cast their net elsewhere. And, and that, to me, is the greatest focus. And you could take that approach, that philosophy, and apply that to other parts of our business, and we that's how we do it. So sustainability, as a quick summary, comes from unique model, unique ways of deploying the model. We're, we're a tech stack company, but we'll leverage our tech stack. We'll discount our tech stack. We'll invest in the deal in order to get more out of the deal at the end, as an example. And that's I'm not aware of any other tech company in our category that does that. Now, I'm not foolish enough to think we'll only be the we'll always be the only ones. But um, my point is that uh, tech becomes is a part of it, 
but you need to have strong partnerships. You need to continue to invest and cultivate those partnerships and you have to be creative on the model. Absolutely. All right. I got 30 seconds for one more quick question, you know, looking ahead to 2023 from what you can tell us, you know, what, what would you say is that one thing, that one value catalyst that you want folks, and I'm sure there's many of them. So I apologize, but if you had to choose one that you want folks to pay attention to, what would it be? We're scaling our ABI model and not just with ABI, but with others. Mountain Express is the first one that's gone public, but it's not the only one in the category. Fuel and convenience in our first quarter will represent another 8,000 locations based on what, what we've seen uh, projected. Uh, it is a, a massive category. It's an, an it's enormous opportunity for us. And that's why we think we're going to have a, we had a significant re revenue inflection in 22 and we'll continue to have that revenue inflection in, in 23. Very good. All right. Well, Jay, thank you so much for your presentation today. Really do appreciate it. And to everybody thank watching, you, thank you for participating and enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you again, Jay. Thank you.